The two new cavalry commanders have been confirmed. Here they are on the screen, and in this video, we're going to talk about who they are, why they're significant, and go over the translated English version of the developer feedback, which went live literally just minutes ago in English and earlier today in Vietnamese. So stick around for all of the implications and everything you need to know. Just seconds ago, the developer feedback went live in English. And it's very interesting that developers have been launching videos in Vietnamese. In fact, if you speak Vietnamese, please reach out to me. Please! I would love to work with you on translating the Vietnamese videos as soon as they go live so that I can give that information as soon as it is live rather than waiting for the English version. But the English version, I think, was very insightful. But before I go over this, I want to talk very briefly about the commanders that were just shown. It is official that Bertrand and Alexander Nevsky are the two new commanders that are coming into the game. Bertrand is from France. Alexander is Russian. And they are both CAV commanders. It is finally confirmed. And this makes sense. I did a little bit of investigation into the history of these commanders. And I just want to tell you up front that... I am no history specialist, okay? That is not my superpower. But I did a little bit of research, and here's what I found. Bertrand was born to a family of impoverished nobles. They had no money, so he basically became a mercenary and went off fighting to make some money. And he became very, very strong as a fighter and ultimately learned how to fight uh, on a horse. Basically, chivalry is that whole process. And at one point, his brother was held prisoner, and he fought in a duel where he knocked the dude off of his horse, I think killed the horse, punched the guy in the face, and thus won the duel. And he didn't just punch him in the face. It was like a gauntlet fist, right? Oh, that's got to hurt. So anyways, he frees his brother from a duel and ultimately became just so well-known for hit-and-run tactics um, that weakened an enemy over time. That's Bertrand. He built up such a reputation that when he was once facing execution and had been captured... Uh, they paid a massive ransom to free him because he is so, I guess, uh, effective as a leader and general. And Alexander Nevsky also has a really crazy story where he won some big battle and then got, I guess, kind of full of himself and they exiled him. And then when Russia was facing invasion, they brought him back. They were facing threat from both the Mongols and the Germans. But the Germans were sent in part by the Pope to Christianize Russia, and the Mongols were there to just get money and get wealthy. And so he made an agreement with the Mongols to pay them some taxes and then fought the Germans because he couldn't win both battles at the same time and had a huge fight that they won called the Battle on Ice, which also could very easily be the title of a Disney movie. Uh, well, maybe the word battle doesn't belong in a Disney movie, but add on ice to anything. And well, OK, well, that's going to be a meme for just a little bit. All that to say, these are very significant historical figures. And I even saw a picture saying that this was a sort of famous place in Russia and that there's the possibility of a Russian civilization coming into the game, which actually sounds super, super reasonable to me. But let's get into the juicy stuff right over here. The English version of the developer feedback, part one, post-season development plans, balancing KVK season immigration system. This is big stuff. The relaxing of rules for the immigration system has generally been well-received. As the game continues to run, the number of immigrants continues to grow and having an effect on the original inhabitants of the kingdoms in many seasons. We're thinking about ways to optimize and adjust the immigration system to allow the robust development of the KVK season. We'll let you know as soon as we have more details. So it sounds to me like they are worried potentially even about KVK season two, right? That's where the original inhabitants are most impacted is early seasons of KVK. Can you continue to migrate back? I don't know if that's something that they're going to continue to, to allow, but they're looking at it. And at some point down the road, they will make a change. I generally think that while it was fun to go back to KVK season two, to play with a great group and make a big, an even bigger group. I think that that's very problematic for people who are new to the game to be like, oh, hi, I'm brand new. And then someone shows up who's like, oh, hi, I've been playing for three years and I have everything. Okay, GG. I think a part of the fun of this game is going through the early game rush. And I don't think that should necessarily end right after season one. I, I and, and so 
All that to say, migration is tricky and they're thinking about it. Improving the crystal season in the season of conquest. Okay, the crystal system. Since the establishment of the crystal system, we've had plenty of suggestions from governors. <laughs> yeah. You don't say! Uh, we carefully are considering the ways of optimizing the system. The first step will be increasing the number of ways that you can receive uh, and recycle crystals to improve the overall experience. These changes are still in the planning phase. So I have a couple thoughts here. I have a couple thoughts here. Um, when we say recycle crystals, what I think would be bad is if the people who get the most crystals then start the season with more crystals because then they just snowball their lead. I think if they could recycle crystals into something else really valuable, like tons of gold, like now you have my attention, right? Um, but also, uh, I think that the idea of having more ways to receive crystals is really good. Like close the gap between free to play and pay to win. In this last KVK that I was in, where we were basically up against the number one and number two kingdoms in the game by power, actually quite literally, uh, I mean, we were trapped in our starting zone which meant that we didn't have access to as many bastions, which meant that our just our crystal tech was massively, massively, massively slowed for our whole free-to-play player base, which is a problem for us because we had a huge free-to-play player base. So all that to say, more ways to get crystals sounds very, very good, and that's something I've been advocating for for a while. And the recycling of crystals could be very dangerous if what that means is that the people who already had the most can start the season with more. I think that a way to convert your excess crystals into something more favorable then the current exchange rate for gold would be very interesting. Uh, new KVK format, by the way. New KVK format's coming, and in a number of kingdoms, we will soon be introducing a new season of Conquest story, Desert Conquest, including a new desert map. In this story, governors will capture uh, fortresses that become the fortress manager. I am, like, very concerned that this sounds a lot like March of the Ages. They become the fortress manager, the general, Generals can manage the troops of other governors within the fortress, coming up with strategies uh, for and defending uh, and attacking against enemies and taking over fortresses and strongholds in the desert, which cannot be teleported to. So you send troops to one of these forts. Basically, Bunny is going to be managing my troops. He's going to send all of them to die in this next KVK. And I already accepted that that's how that would work. So whatever. <laughs> but you basically send troops to one of these forts and the manager, the general, controls them. I guess that's good if you, like, can't be online. Maybe this is the answer for, like, players who can't actively play the game. It's like, just, you can't come online to contribute. Just send your troops to the to the fortress and, and Buddy will send them all to die, right? Like, I don't know if Buddy's going to be okay with my saying that he's going to send all my troops to die. But that's probably happening, right? All right, so, uh, I mean, I mean, look, like, when I came to 254, I kind of knew... I knew what I was signing up for. Okay. So governors who aren't able to move their troops in real time can still leave them under the command of the general by ordering them to assemble at the fortress, allowing them to contribute to their camp's forces. We hope that this new story will provide governors with a varied and enjoyable gameplay experience. Hope that you'll enjoy the design behind it. This will be especially dangerous if like, can you, uh, there's gotta be some capacity of the fortress. Can you imagine if it's uncapped and it's like, okay, every farm in the kingdom, send troops to the fortress. Every farm. And can you get there unharassed or can your, troop, can your troops be attacked along the way? I don't know. There's a lot of questions I have about this new KVK format, but it's exciting. A couple hot topics. Would you consider merging kingdoms that have lower populations? The answer is ultimately no. We pay close attention to the populations of kingdoms, but we have no plans to merge them at this time. We're currently looking at a fairer and more systematic way to resolve this problem. We've come up with a design for a new KVK system. Rather than being based around kingdoms, this new system would be based around alliances, giving them the freedom to choose to register for Season of Conquest stories. This way, players in kingdoms with low populations could choose to participate in seasons through an alliance. The system is being implemented through a select number of kingdoms and will be paying close attention. So this was the genesis of the new alliance-based KVK. And you've, you didn't hear this. From my other video, card will be up in the top. You're really going to want to check that out. The alliance-based KVK system had some kinks in it, I think, in the way that it could be executed such that, like, you could lock up the whole kingdom from queuing for KVK. So this could be a good small kingdom solution, but for big kingdoms, it's kind of weird. Um, and, and so maybe there is a size of the kingdom threshold by which you say small kingdoms can register as an alliance, huge kingdoms that have you know, spent a massive amount of time building this huge kingdom-wide cohesiveness. They all register as a kingdom. I don't know. It raises a lot of questions. In fact, 
I don't know if everybody realizes how meaningful alliance-based KVK is for completely changing the way everybody plays the game. Like, not gonna lie, it's a big deal. So I'm glad that they're testing it. I'm glad that they pumped the brakes. In fact, we have a KVK pop right now in Kingdom 254, and it's not an alliance-based KVK pop. So uh, we're not taking the KVK pop, by the way. Oh my God, I'm still recovering, please. Please give me time to get some gold, okay? Uh, could you increase verification rewards? You know, if they increase verification rewards, I will be the wealthiest governor of all time. I verify on three accounts. My main, my restart, my farm, and I must verify five to ten times a day on every account. It, I, I, yes, more rewards would be awesome. We received a lot of feedback from governors about this. However, we're concerned that increasing verification rewards could make completing verification a new way to participate in events. This would defeat the original <clears throat> point of the verification system, eliminating idling and providing a genuine gaming environment. Due to this, we currently have no plans to change the rewards. GG! No plans, man. I mean, it makes sense. Like, they can't in increase the rewards that are designed to punish you, I guess, for idling. I thought it was to prevent... I thought it was to punish you from botting, to stop you from botting. But it looks like they're, they're saying it's more about preventing you from idling in the game. I don't know. Uh, what are the latest developments with the PC version? Still under testing, still taking great feedback and suggestions, and there's still issues that need to be resolved. I mean, look, the PC version is a massive, massive step for the game, um, and it's still in testing. Okay, I, I mean, get it right. Nobody wants to be in KVK and, like, have a bunch of troops die because of some bug. So when that thing goes live, it needs to work, and I appreciate that. This has been another face-to-face -face with the developers. If you have any questions related to the game, you're welcome to leave feedback via the in-game community or customer service there you freaking go man i mean i'm definitely hyped for kvk and this new format it doesn't bring us sea battles in fact it's literally they did literally the opposite of sea battles okay they were like hold on what if instead of fighting in water you fought where there is no water at all like none it's like okay okay so we're fighting where there's no water whatsoever and the new gimmick the mechanic is that you send your troops to these fortresses, which you cannot teleport near, and your troops are literally managed by somebody else. Man, it's just going to be really interesting waking up to a ton of dead troops. And it's not any different than what you would do today AFKing in a flag, is it? Like, going offline with your troops in a flag? Isn't that the same thing? Not that that's something I do a lot. Well, I might leave a captain in a flag. I don't know. I mean, do you leave your captains behind? Dude, can... Can, can I put my captains? You know what I actually like about this? Let's be real for a second. Account sharing is a huge problem. Account sharing is a problem because the people that are doing it are making it such that they have potentially top-tier rally leads and garrisons available literally 24-7 around the clock for their kingdom. But if this new system basically throws a wrench in all of that and says, well, guess what? You don't have to account share. Now you just put your commanders in the fortress and somebody else can manage them. That's actually kind of cool, right? Like attacking account sharing, I think is actually really cool. Um, and attacking the extent to which that is meta is, is probably a good thing. So um, yeah, I think that's actually kind of cool. And I will remind everybody that account sharing is against the terms of service and very bad things can happen to your account if you are account sharing. I mean, I've just heard some stories that are just, it's just, you don't want to do it. In my opinion, it's a lot of risk you open yourself up to. Yikes! Oh, God. If you enjoyed this video, throw a like on here and consider subscribing. I will talk more about this new KVK format as soon as I have more information. I am very glad that I waited just a little bit for the English version here because there's just so much rich information in this developer feedback. And I can't wait to have more to share with you. Until next time, you have fun smashing your enemies and subscribe so you don't miss the next huge announcement from Rise of Kingdoms.